Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're looking at the stories behind six iconic rock hits. Everyone knows these songs, but not everyone knows these stories. Buckle up, it's gonna be a wild ride. We might as well start this list off with a bang. There are few songs, if any, as iconic as the Led Zeppelin classic, Stairway to Heaven. Having just released the album Led Zeppelin III, the group was one of the top billed rock bands in the world. But despite having earned the admiration of countless fans, critical acclaim continued to thwart them. The LA Times going so far as to claim that their popularity could be attributed to nothing more than drug use amongst teenagers. After Led Zeppelin III was panned by critics, the band went back to the studio with an attitude. Almost like a defense mechanism, as if to say, oh, you didn't like that one, you're gonna hate the next one. The driving creative force and guitarist for the band, Jimmy Page had one song in particular he thought could be special. Not only because it was a beautiful arrangement, unfolding one element at a time, building to a monstrous crescendo, but also because it clocked in at over seven minutes. Something fairly uncommon for the time and sure to get the critics worked up. According to Page, the song form had been more or less crafted before any lyrics were written. One evening while the band was rehearsing the song at Headley Grange, a stone manor turned recording studio, Robert Plant improvised the majority of the lyrics. The song became Stairway to Heaven. One of the greatest rock and roll songs of all time that continues to drive guitar store employees crazy all these years later. Moving on. Take me down to the paradise city where the girls are fat and they've got big titties. Oh, won't you please take me home? Obviously, these are not the lyrics to the Guns N' Roses classic, but they would have been had guitarist Slash had his way. Before they were a household name, Guns N' Roses had built a reputation as an LA club band to be reckoned with. Though they still had yet to release their debut album, Appetite for Destruction, GNR had made their way up the coast to San Francisco for a series of gigs. While driving back home in their rental van, the band was jamming and getting drunk in the backseat. Axl Rose improvised the line, Take Me Down to the Paradise City, which Slash followed with, where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Axel again sang, Take Me Down to the Paradise City. This time, Slash followed it up with, where the girls are fat and they've got big titties. The song was more or less finished by the time the LA skyline came into view. And though Slash claims he always preferred his second line, he was overruled and the song was cemented with the lyrics we know now. Next up on our list, we have the song, I Am The Walrus by The Beatles. Goo Goo Gachu. This song showcases John Lennon's interest in the avant-garde. A far cry from the music the Beatles had started off playing, but very cool nonetheless. Next time you listen to this song, pay close attention to the melody in the verses. Lennon claimed it was inspired by the sound of an ambulance siren he heard while walking through Hyde Park in London. The lyrics may sound like complete nonsense. I am the Eggman. They are the Eggman. I am the walrus. And that's because they are. John received some fan mail from a schoolboy in London telling him that they were analyzing Beatles lyrics in their English class. Being the pre-internet troll that John Lennon was, this inspired him to write something totally nonsensical and undecipherable. Mashing up various ideas he had floating around from different sources of inspiration, I Am The Walrus was born. Goo 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 Choo. Now, I understand that our next song, I Shot the Sheriff, is more reggae than rock and roll. But Bob Marley crossed over into the mainstream back in the 70s, so we're gonna give me a pass for including this song on the list, aren't we? Bob would often keep the meanings of his songs a mystery. Apparently, he didn't even tell Eric Clapton, whose cover of I Shot the Sheriff became a number one hit, what the song was truly about. While at one point, Bob claimed that the sheriff in the song was a metaphor for wickedness, his girlfriend at the time offered another thought. She was on birth control, which the reggae superstar believed to be sacrilegious. The doctor who prescribed her the pill was the sheriff of the song, which would explain the line, Sheriff John Brown always hated me for what? I don't know. Every time I plant a seed, he said kill it before it grow. Though he desperately wanted a child with his girlfriend, it was probably for the better that they didn't, since they broke up once she found out he already had a wife and children. Next up, we have a classic by the Canadian legend Brian Adams, Summer of 69. And this song has a bit of controversy surrounding its meaning. Upon first listen, it sounds like an innocent nostalgic ditty about a simpler time in life. And according to the song's co-writer, Jim Valance, that's exactly what the song's about. However, in Brian Adams' words, I think Summer of 69 is timeless because it's about making love in the summertime. There's a slight misconception it's about a year, but it's not. 69 has nothing to do about a year. It has to do with a sexual position. At the end of the song, the lyric says that it's me and my baby in a 69. You'd have to be pretty thick in the ears if you didn't get that lyric. 
All right, so Brian leaves little room for interpretation here. But co-writer Jim's response was that at no point in the writing of this song was the sexual innuendo discussed. So I'm gonna leave it up to you, believe what you decide to believe. Which brings us to the last song on our list, the anthem of the 90s, Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Which I recently found out is not a cover of the Weird Al song, Smells Like Nirvana. The origins of this song date back to a drunken night starring Kurt Cobain and his friend Kathleen. The two had been out and about, raising hell before they eventually retired to a motel room. Kurt passed out and Kathleen wrote on the wall in Sharpie, Kurt smells like teen spirit. When he saw the next morning, the phrase stayed with him. He figured it had some prophetic anarchistic meaning when in reality, Kathleen wrote it because Kurt's girlfriend at the time wore a deodorant called teen spirit. In Kurt's own words, this song was his attempt at the ultimate pop song. Heavily inspired by one of his favorite bands, The Pixies, the song features a sharp dynamic contrast between the verses and choruses. With some slight tweaking in the studio, it went on to become the grunge anthem we know today. And those, my friends, are the stories behind six iconic rock hits. If you've made it this far in the video, I think you might enjoy a book that I'd like to recommend. The Songs of John Lennon is an in-depth look at the songs John wrote during the Beatles years. It not only looks at the meanings and lyrics behind these tunes, but also offers an in-depth study in their musical theory. I've got a link for it down in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I want to give a big shout out to everyone who supports my channel through Patreon. If you're interested in early access to my videos, as well as a number of other cool things, please check out that program. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, stay tuned, I've got new videos coming at you twice a week. I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I will see you again soon.